Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we'll be taking a look at getting JS8 Call installed on the Raspberry Pi. It's pretty simple, uh, quick and painless, and then after we get it installed, we'll look at some of the basic configurations to get everything running. So let's get to it. First, first thing we need to do is head over to the uh, group.io page for JS8 Call. Uh, now you will have to register to log onto the page, but it's a pretty quick and painless process. And from the main page, we'll click right here on the wiki download page. Alright, so we're looking for the package for the Raspberry Pi. Now, I don't use the app installer uh, with the Raspberry Pi, because remember I built mine from Stretch Lite and then just install the desktop. So we'll grab the regular Debian package by right-clicking on it and saying copy the link address. Back on the Pi, let's open up our terminal window and let's use the wget command and paste in the link that we copied from the website. Go ahead and hit return and let that download. All right, now that that's downloaded, let's clear off the screen and we'll list out our files here. All right, here's our file that we just downloaded. So I'm going to highlight that and just copy it. And let's do a sudo dpackage-i and paste in that file name. And that'll go ahead and get JS8 call installed for us. One thing to mention here, if you do run into any dependency problems, you can always run sudo app, that's apt, space, dash, dash, fix, dash, broken, space, install. And most of the time, that'll fix any dependency problems that you had. All right, now that takes care of the install. So we'll just minimize the terminal window. And right here under sound and video is the JS8 call. As of when this video is released, JS8 Call is still beta software. Uh, so you'll get a warning, possibly on the first run, uh, that lets you know when the software will expire. After that date, you'll have to go and download and uh, install the latest version. So we'll just go ahead and say OK there. And then it's going to pop up with the settings box. So in the general column, I'm going to go ahead and give it my call sign. Now, I'm not going to enter my grid square because I'm going to get my grid square from the GPS unit. I'll leave a link to the video uh, that I did prior that shows you how to get the GPS to feed the grid square into JS8 Call. So that's the only thing I'm going to do here. We'll go over to audio and double check. And it did pick up my uh, USB audio codec, which is my signal link. So I'm good there. The next thing we want to do is click on the Reporting tab. If you have an APRS passcode, go ahead and enter it here so that you can send packets to the APRS system. And then if you're using the GPS for your grid square, you also want to check these two boxes as well. And that should take care of the setup for us. So let's go ahead and click OK. And we'll maximize this screen. And it looks like I am already decoding packets here. So that's it, guys. Pretty easy and straightforward. If you've got any questions, leave it down in the comments. Until next time, 7-3.